tax is put in place on a market, it can affect either the supply curve or the demand curve, at least the position of those curves. What we're going to look at here is a situation where a tax is put in place and it causes the, causes the supply curve to shift. Now normally, all we would do is shift the supply curve, show where the new supply curve crosses the old demand curve, and show the new equilibrium price and quantity. But that's not how things work when a tax is put in place on a market. The oddity of taxes is that it creates essentially two prices, or what we sometimes call a tax wedge. As this supply curve is shifting back and to the left, it gives us a new intersection. But that price is not the price that the buyer pays and the price the seller receives. There's a difference between the two. This price is now the price the buyer pays. The buyer is going to pay a higher price, a price above P star, which was the equilibrium price. So PB is the price the buyer pays. But we have to subtract the tax from that price. And so when we do that, we subtract the tax the buyer pay, the, the, the tax that is part of the market now, and that gives us the price the seller actually gets to take home. So we have the price the buyer pays PB minus the tax, which gives us the seller's price. Now, the quantity does decrease. We go from Q star, which was the market quantity prior to the tax, to now QT, which is the quantity that prevails when the tax is in place. This causes the surplus, the total well-being generated by the initial trade, to shrink by the area of this triangle. This triangle is referred to as the deadweight loss of the tax because there's a reduction in the wealth being of society as we artificially impose a different set of price standards. This decrease in the tax, or this decrease in the surplus, this deadweight loss, is the worst thing from an economist's perspective about taxes. Because you are reducing the wealth or the well-being created as a result of a transaction, a voluntary transaction, you're reducing that by imposing an artificial tax structure. Deadweight losses are bad because it used to be well-being that was generated. Now, the problem isn't that government gets revenue. Government does get revenue from this transaction. As we see here, the consumer surplus shrinks. It used to be the area above the equilibrium price and below the demand curve. But now the price has gone up, so the consumer surplus triangle shrinks. The producer surplus triangle shrinks as well. It goes from the area below the price and above the supply curve to the now lower price, and so that area shrinks as well. Some of that surplus goes to government, which is the rectangle here. And the fact that government gets some revenue, gets some of that surplus, isn't worrisome. What is worrisome is that there is some of the surplus that used to be there that no longer exists. It's sort of like somebody breaking into your house and stealing your things. So let's say they steal your cell phone and your laptop. Now, the fact that you don't have them anymore is bad for you, but somebody else gets some benefit of it, the thief. Now, let's think about this. What if the, the thief, in the process of getting away from your house, falls down and breaks your things? Now nobody gets them. That's sort of what the deadweight loss is like. It's a bad thing because it reduces the well-being, and that well-being goes nowhere.